Hello. Electrostatics, important question. State two limitations of Coulomb's law. First, it is based upon or uh, it is applicable for point charges only. And second, it is applicable for charges at rest. Next, two charges attract each other with force F. If distance between them is halved, doubled, how will force change? So, for first part, for second part, how we are going to do it? So, case one, instead, I am subdividing this part. Case one, F equal to K, that is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught, Q1, Q2 upon R square. And case two, F dash is equal to K, Q1, Q2 upon, it is halved that is r by 2 square so in the denominator it will become 4 it will reappear here as 4 k q1 q2 upon r square which is same as this so it will become 4 times that of previous second if it is doubled once again k q1 q2 upon r square and now when it is doubled so f dash equal to k q1 q2 upon 2 r square which is equal to Actually, in the denominator, 1 by 4 will appear now. K, Q1, Q2 upon R square. And this term is F. So, we can say this time it will become 1 fourth of previous force. Two identical spheres. Okay, so uh, anytime, anytime, if anything um, in such manner can be asked. So, uh, solve it in two ways. Earlier, uh, before and after. In that manner. Okay, two identical sphere, each of having charge Q. Uh, the D between their center and electric radius of a sphere. Now, uh, these two spheres then placed D by 2 distance apart. Actually, similar question. Now, it is halved. So, uh, find the ratio between forces in two cases. So, in case 1, I am writing it F1. It will be K, Q. Both uh, having Q. So, Q, Q upon D square. Actually, they have given D. So, that is why I am putting uh, D there. And uh, F2, K, Q, Q. Q is not changing and d by 2 square and now divide both of them find ratio of your own uh, if any doubt occurs then you can ask me in the comments two charges placed in vacuum repel each other um, with force f a medium of dielectric constant k is placed between them uh, actually now now a medium of dielectric constant this is placed between them find a new force so uh, we know that uh, f when placed in vacuum uh, is equal to 1 upon 4 pi. Actually, I avoid this uh, writing 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught. That is why I put k. But this time I have to go with this. Uh, okay, uh, charges are not given. So q1, q2 will put q1, q2 upon r square. And no condition have been changed other than a dielectric constant. So with medium, only the thing will change here is epsilon naught k. Remember one thing, the k which I put here is small k. And it is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught. And the, uh, whatever, this, this k is dielectric constant k. This mm, dielectric constant k is epsilon by epsilon or permittivity of medium upon permittivity of vacuum or permittivity of free space. So it is also defined as force between charges placed in vacuum upon force between charges placed in medium. Keep this thing in your mind. Uh, well, this is q1, q2 upon r square. Divide both of them. And uh, now what will happen? f medium upon f vacuum is equal to entire this 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught k q1 q2 upon r square upon 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught uh, q1 q2 upon r square that is why it will become 1 upon k so f in medium will become 1 by k into f in vacuum so at this time k is 5 so f in vacuum upon 5 or directly we can use this uh, formula also i am doing it here if you remember this if you remember this then you can directly do this f in vacuum upon f in medium and uh, that is why f in medium is f in vacuum upon k and k is 5 so f in vacuum by 5 okay why electric field line be normal to the surface of charge conductor if you don't know just remember memorize this thing that for charge conductor uh, electric field line is normal to the surface but why is it so uh, so uh, for uh, to explain this i'm going to draw a metal surface and uh, i'm assuming that uh, it is not normal to the surface but at an angle theta with the surface so let electric field intensity is at an angle theta 
with normal to the surface so it will have two components one normal to the surface and other one parallel to the surface then i'm not marking them as uh, e cos theta e sin theta i'm just writing uh, the component of e along the surface of conductor will exert force on charges on the surface of conductor so charges will no longer static for static charges this component should be zero oh i'm crossing the limits so only normal to the surface uh, only component normal to the surface will be there for static charge all right so i hope you people might think that uh, this explanation uh, has gone uh, too long yeah of course but uh, the basic idea is actually uh, if it would be at some angle there will be two component this one and that one and uh, due to this component horizontal component or uh, the component which is parallel to the surface will agitate will uh, for, uh, apply force on charges on the surface so those charges will move and they will move until there is an equilibrium is achieved and equilibrium, equilibrium can be achieved only when only uh, there is perpendicular component and no horizontal component i mean no parallel component along the surface there if there is no uh, component parallel to the surface and only component perpendicular to the surface then only charges on the surface of conductor can be static why electric field be zero inside a conductor okay so if there is charge inside uh, okay electric field okay uh, why electric field be zero inside a conductor uh, uh, so actually we can't go by this we can go by this also we can say that uh, if there is electric field inside it then according to gauss theorem there must be some charge enclosed in it and uh, by, um, if there is charge uh, then that charge will be appeared uh, on the surface uh, till then there will be uh, some movement of charges so no static charge can be there inside the uh, conductor but uh, that explanation uh, needs lots of support from gauss theorem and other things and that is situational only so there is another way we can say if there is electric field inside a conductor then oh, what is this the charges will be in the state of motion so there will be no static charge for static charge in the conductor and rest of it i'm not going to write because there is no space for static charge in the conductor electric field must be zero because okay i'm showing it here now if uh, there is some electric field then that electric field will push charge carriers that is electron uh, due to electrostatic force so it means uh, those electron will move but if we talk about electrostatics if we uh, talk about charges at rest then there must be zero electric field so that charges would not be pushed next why two electric field line cannot intersect each other otherwise there will be two directions of electric field at a point 
which is not possible. Okay, why an electric field line cannot have a sudden break? So I hope you people are getting this. So electric field line starts from positive charge and ends at negative charge. Actually, if there is only positive charge, then they terminate at infinity. But if there is negative charge, then they end at they terminate at negative charge. If there is a sudden break in the electric field line, then it means there is a negative charge. But if it is not there, electric field line cannot terminate. So actually sudden break means if this is field line and suddenly it is breaking up and then it is going like this. So this is not possible because it is only possible when there is uh, some charge or something, uh, some shielding or some other agency is there. But if there is nothing, uh, there is no reason that this line can have sudden break. It can end at negative charge only and then that field line can end. But if there is nothing, it cannot be suddenly break. Uh, one more explanation we can give that the electric field line um, gives the direction of uh, motion of uh, direction of uh, force uh, on um, a charge particle, positive charge particle placed in that region. So, so this sudden jump cannot be explained. It is not possible if a particle is placed on this, uh, a charge particle is placed on uh, this uh, electric field line. It can't have a sudden jump. It can't uh, perform a sudden jump from here to here. So, what is the direction of electric field? Or what does uh, an electric field line indicate? So, the answer I have given, I'm just stating it, uh, I'm just writing it here. So, direction of electric field line or electric field is the direction of force acting on uh, positive test charge. Positive test charge particle placed in that electric field. All right, uh, is electric field due to charge configuration with the total uh, charge uh, zero necessarily, um, uh, total charge zero necessarily zero means uh, charge total Q, total charge zero necessarily zero means if a uh, system has total charge zero then uh, the electric field is necessarily zero or not. The answer is net charge can be zero. But constituting, but constituting charges will have their own electric field, which can be non-zero. For example, electric dipole, it has net charge zero but electric field around it, non-zero electric field around it. Next, does the charge given to a metallic sphere depend on uh, whether it is hollow or solid? Give reason. Actually, charging a conductor is a surface phenomenon. Actually, uh, it depends upon surface. Actually, uh, if we charge a um, uh, uh, conductor, then that charge appears at its surface. Previously, we discussed that there can never be electric field inside the conductor. So that is why charge only resides on the surface of a conductor. So charging, of, uh, charging a conductor is a surface phenomena. So it is independent of whether it is solid or hollow. Next, define electric flux. State whether it is vector or scalar. Define electric flux. State whether it is vector or scalar. Total number of electric field lines passing 
normally oh god where i gone uh, so a surface is called electric flux it is a scalar quantity for an evidence phi subscript e equal to e dot a it is coming out from dot product so vectors uh, produce it but with the dot product so dot product means a scalar product so that is why it is a scalar quantity what is meant by uh, actually it is not as what i am writing it's uh, si unit also which is uh, newton per uh, newton meter square per coulomb actually it is newton per coulomb for electric field it is newton per coulomb and area is meter square so newton meter square per coulomb and as uh, electric field unit of electric field is also volt per meter and area is in meter square so volt meter volt times meter is also its unit what is meant by uh, electric dipole and electric dipole okay so uh, an arrangement of two equal and opposite point charges at a small distance apart is called electric dipole okay very long question define electric dipole moment so the product of magnitude of one of the charge forming dipole and dipole length is called electric dipole moment its si unit uh, first its for its formula p equal to q into 2 l so its unit is coulomb meter uh, whether it is vector or scalar it is vector and state its direction from negative charge negative charge to positive charge if radius of gaussian surface okay now gaussian gauss theorem has arrived uh, i didn't uh, um, consider its question here that state uh, gauss theorem i am just asserting it uh total number of electric field uh, lines that is electric flux net electric flux we can say net electric flux uh, and my asserting both theorem net electric flux um, passing through a closed surface is one upon epsilon naught times net charge enclosed by the surface you need to memorize it by heart okay if uh, radius of gaussian surface enclosing charge is halved does electric flux through gaussian surface change answer is no if justification is asked then it is independent of shape and size of the surface until enclosed charge is same charge is same so remember that if i am uh, this pen uh, this um, uh, sketch pen is charged and i am enclosing it inside a jar inside a box or whatever then um, the total flux coming out from it will not change but um, if i change the surface size uh, size of the surface if this was the size of the surface and i have increased it it doesn't affect but if i have reduced the size of the surface and now um, earlier enclosed charge is somewhat reduced see you can see now some of the part is outside then only uh, flux uh, would change but unless it is uh, uh, that surface is enclosing same amount of charge then how, um, how much it is bigger how much it is smaller it doesn't affect okay so uh, not just to memorize this thing that um, science doesn't matter but also unless the charge is same in which orientation dipole plays in a uniform electric field is stable unstable uh, once it has came in uh, a two mark question so for stable equilibrium theta is 0 degree for unstable theta is 180 degree where theta is the angle between electric field intensity and dipole moment next a charge q is placed at the center of a cube side l what is the electric flux passing through each face okay so phi through whole cube is q by epsilon naught there is no use of this n you know that it is enclosing q charge so net charge upon epsilon naught this is this is what gauss theorem is all about so that's all but for one face we you know there are six faces in a cube so we will divide it by 6 so q by epsilon naught upon 6 so that is q by 6 epsilon naught next question a charge q is placed at the center of cube side l what is the electric flux passing through two opposite faces this time this time uh, question has gone bit tricky uh, charges there and two opposite faces 
your student would write zero no no not zero it is going out because charge is at the center so uh, now there are two faces so you have to find uh, for two faces earlier uh, we did for uh, one face and this time you have to do it for two faces that is uh, phi um, for whole cube is equal to q by epsilon naught so phi for one face is equal to q by 6 epsilon naught or phi for two opposite face now we will multiply it with 2 2 q upon 6 epsilon naught that is q by 3 epsilon naught so here it is two charges of magnitude minus 2 q and plus q are located at a comma 0 and 4 a comma 0 respectively what is the electric flux due to these charges through a sphere radius 3 a sphere radius 5 a maybe one will be 0 other will be something i don't know uh, for this you need to have a clear cut idea what is this all about so we will draw a schematic graph and uh, this point a0 means it is along x axis so maybe it's somewhere here this is a0 so here the charge is minus 2q uh, i used to write a small q but if they have given capital q i can't uh, overrule it 4a 1a 2a 3a 4a maybe here so it is plus q and this distance is a and this distance is 4a actually there is nothing in y axis so that is only around along x axis now there is a sphere well i have to divide a and b like this okay in case one uh, sphere has a radius a and its center is at origin so radius 3a means 1a 2a 3a it will leave this 4a this will be the sphere for first for a so in case a q net is only equal to minus 2q so flux i'm putting subscript a for a part q net upon epsilon naught that is minus 2q minus you need to put minus also if it is negative charge see now uh, flux can be positive or negative both depending upon enclosed charge b point radius is 5a so 5 till here it is 4 5 will go from somewhere here like this then it is enclosing both the charges then q net is minus 2q plus q that is minus q so once again 5b uh, this time i'm doing it directly is equal to no i want to uh, let me explain you that you need to put some steps uh, actually you can skip some steps but uh, these steps uh, there's no use to skip uh, writing this q net upon itself now so that's why okay so uh, all right next question actually so much hot pot is here uh, in adjacent uh, arrangement electric field intensity at e is uh, zero so no electric field intensity is there uh, right to conclusion first thing uh, if both charges would be like charges means both positive then electric field intensity electric field line due to q1 will go this way due to q2 go this way so both will be added and if both are negative both field line will come towards so first thing is first uh, first point is they must be opposite charges first thing is that second thing okay uh, there must be opposite charges that is why uh, electric field intensity due to them is in opposite direction uh, it will cancel out uh, second thing this charge is closer to this point and this is farther so its electric field intensity uh, still it's uh, if they would be they would having equal charges then uh, its electric field intensity would be greater but what is happening electric field intensity due to this and due to this both are equal then we can solve it so actually electric field intensity due to first charge is equal to due to second charge they are equal and opposite but right now i'm not putting vector sign so i'm directly put them in with equality sign i'm writing here equal and opposite i'm not putting unnecessarily negative sign here so we know that this is kq upon r and uh, for one it is r1 square kq q1 q2 upon r2 square both are equal so now we can say um, what i am doing i'm cross multiplying these q1 upon q2 is equal to r1 square upon r2 square and from this diagram we can say that r1 is greater than r2 from diagram so we can say that q1 is greater than q2 so first thing they must be opposite charges and q1 should be greater 
another question a misguiding question a cube encloses an electric dipole having dipole moment this dipole length is find net flux through the cube answer is zero since if they ask justification since net charge on dipole is zero that's all no need to do anything these values are given here to misguide you ultimately need uh, you need to uh, know just uh, one thing that uh, electric dipole has net charge zero and we are enclosing an, an uh, entire electric dipole so net flux will be zero keep these things in your mind not always but with this electric dipole enclosed then only okay a point charge plus q is placed in the vicinity vicinity nearness of a conducting surface draw electric field line okay so if there is plus q this is point charge so we know that its electric field line will be spherically symmetric but for a conductor it is coming out like this few more field line but uh, there is not required i'm uh, making most of them this way see now if field line goes like this then on this conductor it will be at some angle which is not possible for conductor it must be normal to the surface from here it is emerging out radially but here it must be normal so what is the best possibility this is that's all and uh, okay this is plus charge and uh, see this is how there is some induced charge here negative and there is some induced charge positive on opposite face and the same type of question here draw uh, oh in fact okay draw electric field line for conduct uh, for following arrangement so same type of question with uh, another plate placed so here it is and uh, if you have time you can mark these charges if you don't have time mark few of them and move on that's all next a small sphere this is the small sphere actually it looks like a bull's eye uh, that i don't know what is its name uh, that paper on which uh, people do shooting for aiming purpose but uh, it is not that this inside this portion is a sphere tiny sphere carrying charge plus q all right located at the center of a spherical cavity this is spherical cavity so understand this concept like um, if uh, understand this uh, in that way that uh, this is a football and inside it mm, there is uh, a bearing a ball a small tiny ball is placed at the center somehow so uh, write the charges on inner and outer surfaces of the shell so what will happen actually this is the charge plus q then due to induction actually they have given oh, capital q so i have to write capital q so there will be induced charge on the inner surface and that induced charge will be minus q so first part inner surface charge equal to minus q then outer surface so the charge induced in the inner surface is same as on the outer surface but with opposite sign so outer surface outer surface charge I'm writing it q dash is plus q. Similarly, due to induction, and uh, expression for uh, write the expression for point P. What I have written? Expression for electric field actually. Electric field at point P. So remember, the electric field intensity at P will be due to this charge only. So P at P is equal to k q upon r square. K is one upon four five seven naught. That's all. Uh, okay, twenty seventh question. Uh, if Coulomb law depend upon one by r cube instead of one by r square, would Gauss law would Gauss law still be true? Answer is no. And that's all. Just move on. If uh, justification is asked, then we can uh, use dimensional analysis for that, and we need not to prove that thing. Then, if uh, it depend upon one by r cube. Then dimensionally, uh, Gauss law will be incorrect. That's all we can say. Uh, a point charge plus Q is placed at O. Okay, whatever I'm doing it for plus Q charge, uh, you can do it for negative charge also. Negative Q charge. Then um, the answer would be uh, just uh, reversed with sign. Um, oh God. So uh, placed at O as shown in figure. Uh, here it is. 
Okay, find potential difference V A minus V. Okay, is potential difference uh, V A minus V V positive, negative, or zero? Justify. We uh, don't have to just uh, write the answer in a fluke. We have to justify it also. So, uh, V A minus V B is equal to for potential. Poten potential due to point charge. Uh, we can write formula K Q upon R. Remember, for potential, the formula is K Q upon R. But uh, here, uh, Q actually they have given capital Q, so I have to write capital Q upon r for a it is oa i'm writing it as oa i can write as r subscript a also but oa is much convenient and minus kq upon ob and directly we can say that uh, as o a is less than ob so V A minus V B positive. Okay, what is the other explanation? Why, why I am saying that? Because the, the, its denominator is lesser, so this quantity become uh, this denominator is more, so this quantity will become lesser, and that is why it is the dominating one. Or we can solve it. LCM is O A times O B, and then there is K Q O B minus K Q O A, and then K Q is taken as common. It is OB minus OA upon OA OB, and see, bigger minus lesser, that is a positive quantity. All right, so there were few other questions also, but students uh, have given you just an idea that which type of question uh, can be asked in the exam, and these are uh, all of them. Most of them are um, uh, have been asked for past ten years, so these are really really alarming questions. Uh, draw a plot showing variation of electric field intensity with R for point charge. We know for point charge, electric field intensity is inversely proportional to R square. And uh, we have no measurement, just a schematic graph, inverse proportion graph, R square. If it is a square, uh, its curvedness will be more. Uh, linear charge, we know that for linear charge, electric field intensity is inversely proportional to R. Just go through these uh, formulae also. So, inverse proportion graph. Again, inverse proportion graph is similar, but uh, for higher power, it become more uh, uh, more curved uh, surface charge we know that surface charge uh, electric field intensity due to surface charge is independent of r independent of r so it will be like this electric dipole so so um, for electric dipole it is inversely proportional to r cube uh, and remember that uh, for axial position it is two times greater than uh, equatorial position. So there will be a difference in slope. So like this, more curve, more curve than this. If alone one of these inverse proportion graph is asked um, to draw, you can draw any of this way. But if uh, they are, uh, you are required to draw them in comparison, then uh, this uh, curveness should be increased with the R cube value, and uh, it will be like this, which is bit upper. It is for axial which is bit lower is equatorial and uh, draw a plot showing variation v uh, for point charge so we know that uh, v for point charge is inversely proportional to r so this is v this is r and student i advise you whenever you see an expression uh, quickly go to draw its uh, graph uh, whatever be the um, variables in it draw a graph for it that's all next i am going to cover few longer questions uh, in this electrostatics.